First up on today's live NBA mailbag is a question from Malcolm Lloyd. He says, will Harden sit out so that he can get traded? So, Malcolm, here's the deal. If I don't show up to work, I get fired. If James Harden doesn't show up to work, he doesn't get what he wants. That's not how it's going to work. He's going to get fined, and he's just not going to get paid. He'll get his money taken away. He's not just going to get not get traded because, look, the Rockets already know they're probably going to lose him. They're not really worried. He has no leverage in the situation. They know they're going to lose him. They're not worried about that. They just want to get the best deal possible. Him sitting out only hurts his actual chances of being traded because they could hold out as long as they want. If he doesn't show up, he's got to pay the Houston Rockets money or the NBA money for sitting out. He's not going to sit out. If he does, he's stupid, and he's going to end up losing money and get fined. So, no, I don't think him sitting out is really the best move for anybody involved, including the Houston Rockets or James Harden. Ryan Vasquez says, should Jamal Crawford go to the Lakers? So, here's the deal, y'all. I know we all love Jamal Crawford. I know he is a seasoned NBA veteran. And when I say seasoned, this dude has every seasoning you can find on the seasoning counter on, on him at this point. Because he's 40 years old. Older than 40, I think, at this point, And he's not good anymore. He played five minutes in the bubble, and he hurt his hamstring. Because he's old. He does not really have a spot in the NBA anymore at this point. Look, I'm not hating on Jamal Crawford. He was great when he was great. He's not great anymore. And the Lakers, they have more than enough guards on that team. They do not need to bring in an old, washed-up Jamal Crawford. It, it just wouldn't make a lot of sense. But speaking of the Lakers, let's keep sticking with them. As Marcus has a question about them, says, should the Lakers sign Dwayne Dedman? Or he says, should the Lakers sing Deadman? Um, I don't think that's a song, but I think they could sign Dwayne Dedman. But in all honesty... Probably not at this point because now you have Marcus Gasol, Montrez Harrell, and Anthony Davis. Those are your three big men, and you got to find you know proper rotation for all of them. And in order to do that, you can't keep bringing on big men. Now I know Deadman's a little bit different because he's a stretch five, but I'm surprised nobody's picked him up yet. You know he obviously got waived after getting traded from Atlanta, um, and he's out there. I think maybe if they you know if Marcus Gasol ends up getting hurt in the regular season, maybe you bring him on. But I wouldn't bring him on before the season gets going. Mavs Maniac says, who is Luka's biggest competitor for MVP? So Luka at plus 350 actually has the best odds to get to win MVP this next year. Or excuse me, plus 400 to win MVP this next year. Right behind him is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Steph Curry's up there. LeBron James is up there. And Ante Davis is up there. Now, these odds shift and change just about every single day. And I think really all of them are up there for you know MVP this next year. If I'm being honest... I picked Steph Curry at the beginning of the year, and if the lack of, you know, if, if Klay Thompson being out continues to, or it does really hurt him, then he's not going to win it. But it also could help his chances just because he's going to have to do it all. I mean, Steph Curry is going to have to really shoulder the load in Golden State. So I think it's between Luka, Steph, and I'm going to put Anthony Davis up there as well. Also Giannis. So those are probably my four guys. I'm not going to have LeBron top four this year, but I think he's close. Maybe Nikola Jokic, but let me know who you guys have as your MVP next season. Maybe it is Luka, maybe it's Steph, maybe it is LeBron. That's fine. You can always go with LeBron. He could win it every single year for all I care. I mean, he, he's you know just that good, but I don't think he will. So let me know in the comment section who's going to win MVP next season. Let's go to the super chat from Scorpio. What should both the Mavs and Rockets, oh, why should both the Mavs and the Rockets consider a Harden for Porzingis swap? Should Dallas consider KP's injuries in a potential deal? Um, I think both teams say no in this one. Because Harden on that team with Luka, how in the world is that going to work? It's not. That, I mean, I, that's that's how, in all honesty. It's just not going to happen. Uh, for the Houston Rockets, you probably say no because, I mean, it, Harden is a better player than Kristaps Porzingis. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and I just don't think you want to trade your superstar for a guy that is injury prone. I love Kristaps Porzingis. In fact, I think when healthy, he will be an all-star again. But the, it's a big if. It's a big win, you know, if he is healthy again. So I think both teams end up saying no in this one because I just don't like the Luka Harden fit. And also, I don't think the Rockets really care for Kristaps Porzingis for James Harden. So I don't think either team should consider that trade. Dylan says, who should start at point guard for the Heat? None, Dragic, Hero are all good options. You know, I, I like Tyler Hero starting. He's not really a point guard, but because of you know Jimmy Butler being able to handle the ball on that team, they don't need a true point guard. Bam out of bio kind of runs the offense in the half court a lot. If you roll out a lineup of Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson, uh, Bam out of bio, and you know, maybe Myers Leonard, maybe they go two big men down there. 
Or, you know, maybe even Precious Achua impresses early on and he could start next to Bam, but I think that's a little premature on Precious Achua. I like all of them. I would start Goran Dragic, though. I think you keep that veteran in there and you make Tyler Hero kind of that guy off the bench, that spark off the bench, maybe alongside Duncan Robinson. I wouldn't start Hero right away, but uh, I do want to point this out. You guys have pointed this out a lot. In my NBA draft coverage last year, I hated on Tyler Hero, and I was wrong. I've admitted it a hundred times, so leave me alone about it. I know he's good at basketball now, okay? I'm sorry. I was wrong, all right? I'm sorry. He's good, okay? That's all I need to say. I had to get that one out of the way. Let's go to Webb's World 1. He says, Lonzo taking the leap in his fourth year like D'Lo and Brandon Ingram. I, I hope so, man. I hope Lonzo Ball figures it out. Um, he, he really did look pretty good at the beginning of last year, and then he slowly but surely started to kind of fall back into bad habits that he was in with the Los Angeles Lakers. I think he has a real chance to prove himself, and he has a real chance to become a good player as well. Defensively, he's got it. I mean, he is a great defender. I think he's an elite guard defender. His shot looked strong again, same thing. Looked strong early, started to taper off a little bit. Um, and that, you know, that was pretty, pretty disappointing to see. But he's just got to stay aggressive. I think his mindset, it's all about his mentality, all about Lonzo Ball's mentality. When he's all there mentally, he's good. When he's even just a little bit, you know, uninterested, it's bad for Lonzo. So, yeah, I hope he figures it out in year four. Rashawn Hanan says, do the Celtics trade Daniel Tice, the Gordon Hayward exception, and a first for Andre Drummond. I've always kind of been out on Andre Drummond for the Boston team. Uh, plus, do you really want to go Drummond and Tristan Thompson again? You kind of already did that in Cleveland. And it didn't really work out that well. Do you want to do it in Boston? I don't know if I'd trade a first-round pick for Andre Drummond. If you just want to go Daniel Tice straight up, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, why not? He's definitely an upgrade over Daniel Tice. I wouldn't go Tice in a first. I might go Tice and maybe that conditional second and some other second-round picks. Maybe, you know, one of your rookies that you got that you're not going to play a lot. Maybe the draft rights to Yam Madar. Maybe. Um, but I wouldn't trade a first-round pick for Andre Drummond. He doesn't help you win in today's NBA. It's just, it's just how it goes. He hasn't helped the Cleveland Cavaliers win, so I don't know if he's going to help Boston win much more than they already are. Now, if you guys haven't subscribed to Chat Sports yet, I don't know what you're doing because we got the best NBA coverage. We also have the best NFL coverage if you're an NFL fan. So all you got to do is scroll on down and hit the big red button. We make it so easy for you guys to subscribe. We're trying to get to 225,000 subscribers as soon as possible. So help me get there as soon as you can by hitting that big red button or going to youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Best place to go, best place to get all your NBA coverage during the regular season. Let's go to Judah. says, in what situation does a Kongwu start? Hawks get Roberson. When do the Hawks actually compete for a ring? Okay, so I don't think the Hawks will get Andre Roberson, although he would desperately help their defense. That is not going to be good this year. Uh, the rest of the team is going to be great. The Hawks are going to be good this year. Like They will be in the playoffs. Uh, defensively, though, they do need some help. I think the time in which Anyeka Kongwu starts is when Clint Capella kind of tapers off because I don't think, you know, I, I know he's had some injuries. Uh, obviously, if he's injured, I think he'll start alongside John Collins, him being Anyeka Kongwu. And also, Capella offensively is kind of a question mark. Sometimes he looks like a great rim roller. Sometimes he looks lost on offense. Defensively, uh, Clint Capella is always there. But I think eventually that will become Onyeka Kongwu's starting position in Atlanta. I'm very high on Okongwu. I gave him an A-plus for that pick, getting him at six. I, have, I had him as my third best prospect in the NBA draft. And I think taking him, even though he'll be a backup probably his first year, was smart for Atlanta. So good pick for them. I think he'll start eventually on that team. Let's go to this question. It says, Mavs fan, but don't you think that we are a little overrated? No, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why you say that because I've seen people. In fact, I go as far as to say they're underrated at this point because I've seen a lot of projections having us at like the seventh seed. H how we got better than we, being the Dallas Mavericks, got better than they were last year, and they started. They started at seven. Like they they were literally, or they finished. I guess I should say at seven. If they're fully healthy, plus they added defense, which is the one thing that team was missing. There's no reason this team couldn't be top four. In, in the Western Conference. But it all depends on Kristaps Porzingis' health. If KP, you know, obviously he's going to miss that first chunk of the season, probably first two weeks, and then he'll be back. If he misses a ton of time in the regular season, their seed, you know, they could fall lower. But it's all about the playoffs for this team. Once Luka Doncic gets into the playoffs, it doesn't even matter. As long as you can get him and a healthy KP in there, they're going to be just fine. Let's go to this question from John Walker. It says, who steps up as the Warriors' second best scorer, scorer excuse me, with Klay Thompson out. So, yeah, obviously Klay Thompson tearing that Achilles was brutal for this team. I had them picked, actually, as my favorites to come out of the Western Conference. I thought they were really going to put it all together. 
Now, not so much, but they do have some good options as a secondary scorer. Andrew Wiggins is a good scoring option if he can just reel it in and be more efficient than he has been in the past, you know, with his uh, in his uh, time with Minnesota, excuse me, and even this past year with the Warriors a little bit. Kelly Oubre is a great scorer as well. I don't know if I'd make him the secondary scorer, but if he's a good tertiary scorer, I had to include Draymond Green, but he's never really been the secondary scoring type. And then, of course, you have James Wiseman. I think it's a little unfair to put that much expectations, that many expectations on James Wiseman to immediately become the second best scorer on this team, but I think he has that capability. So I'm going to say Wiggins will probably be the second leading scorer on this team, and if he's putting up an efficient 18 to 20 a game, I think they're still in a pretty good place. Now, originally I had them top four in the West with Klay Thompson. I, I can't do that now. I'm going to move them probably to that 6-7 seed for the Golden State Warriors, but you guys can make your predictions below. Maybe you think I'm crazy. Maybe you think I'm stupid. That's fine. Let me know in the comments section. What seed should the Warriors finish as, or what seed will the Warriors finish as this next season? Let me know in the comment section, or if you're watching live with us right now, in the live chat. Cameron says, Eric Gordon and two firsts for TJ Warren. <sighs> two first-round picks for TJ Warren? That's kind of a stretch. Uh, I think the Rockets say no. They also... I mean, I guess they got two first-round picks for Robert Covington, but they're kind of turning their attention toward the draft now. They didn't used to care about the draft at all. Now, all of a sudden, Russell Westbrook and James Harden won out. They're going to have to turn their attention to the draft. I think trading two first-round picks is way too much for TJ Warren. Rockets say no. Let's go to Eden G. says, uh, what do you think of Danny of Dia? I think getting him at nine was a steal for the Washington Wizards. I think he'll fit perfectly next to Bradley Beal and John Wall. I would have taken him top five, maybe top six with the Bulls. Uh, I guess Bulls were four. I would have taken him around that area. Um, I like him a lot. I think he's going to be a good player, and he's got enough time to develop, and he's got a chance to prove himself in Washington. Let's go to Michelle Rebeck says, are the Sixers contenders or pretenders? I think they're pretenders. I'm not ready to say they're contenders yet. I think they will make a push. I hope Doc Rivers does better with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and they figure it out, but I don't think they will. Uh, I, I truly believe they're pretenders, and they're going to get bounced early again, and it's going to be time to blow it up. I know they're trying stuff. I know they've made a lot of right moves. I like what they've done. I think regular season they're going to be really strong, but come playoff time, I just don't believe in them. I, I also honestly just do not believe in Doc Rivers. Uh, I do not believe that he is a good playoff coach, and that's kind of what makes them pretenders to me. So I'm going to say pretenders for now, but they could prove me wrong. If ben Simmons gets a jump shot, which that's the biggest if of all time. Who knows? They're probably, you know, title favorites if he can shoot a decent three, but I don't know if that can happen. Now, one deal I want to tell you guys about real quick is chatsports.com slash NBA mask. You can get these face masks for 25% off today at this link you see right below me. Look, season is, what, 20 days away at this point, which is absolutely insane. And if we're allowed to go to games, you're going to have to wear a face mask, and you're going to want to rep your favorite team while you do it. So go to chatsports.com slash NBA. Be a mask. You can get one for yourself. You can get two for you and somebody else. Packs of three or packs of four, all available at this link that you see right here. One more time, that's chatsports.com slash NBA mask. Go ahead, open up a tab, and you can hear me talking in the background and type it in, chatsports.com slash NBA mask. The CA says, Westbrook or Kyrie? Oh, gosh, that's an interesting question. Can I say neither? Uh, I like – I'm just kidding. They're both very talented point guards. Uh, but in all honesty, they're – I don't know if they can be – they're not going to be your best player on a championship team. I mean, if you're going for second best player on a championship team, I'm obviously taking Kyrie Irving because uh, he's proven that he can do it in the past. Russell Westbrook, kind of empty stats at this point. He's not putting up numbers that really matter. And unless he can take a role where he is the third best player on a championship team, I don't think he's ever going to win a ring as the second or first best player. So I'll go Kyrie Irving, uh, but not by a whole lot, just by a little bit. Let's go to Super Chat from Timberwolf Taylor. Says, who should Detroit target in the draft next year? Well, they drafted Killian Hayes as their point guard of the future. Evan Mobley out of USC is a stud. And if they really feel like they need a big man, he could do that, which they just picked up every big man in free agency that they could find. But he's a stud. Um, also, Jalen Green out of the G League, if they just want to go with a wing, I mean, there's no reason not to go with him. So either of those two guys, I would say Cade Cunningham, but they picked their point guard already in Killian Hayes. So I don't really think they need to go out and get another point guard. But if they want to just go for the best talent available, that's probably the way to go. Now, who do you guys think is the most underrated team in the NBA? Yes, underrated. Not overrated. Underrated. Who is the team that everybody is just overlooking this offseason? Let me know in the comment section or if you're watching live with me right now in the live chat. Maybe it's your favorite team. Go ahead and shout them out. 
Super chat from Nick P says Giannis to the Hawks next year. They have the cap space to do it, but uh, I don't think Giannis would want to go from Milwaukee to Atlanta. Unless he and Trey Young are just like super good friends. It's just not going to happen. Uh, that's, a, that's a hard no from me, but it's a fun idea. He and Trey Young would be a, a pretty good pair, I'd have to say. Rogue Brothers, another super chat, says Julius Randle in a sign and trade of Reggie Jackson to the Timberwolves. Beverly and Lemon Pepper Lou with three second rounders to the Knicks and Rubio to the Clippers. All right, so let me dumb this down for myself. Uh, Julius Randle and Reggie Jackson go to the Timberwolves. Patrick Beverly and Lou Williams go to the New York Knicks along with three second round picks. And Ricky Rubio goes to the Clippers. Uh, I don't really know why the Knicks are getting involved in this one. I mean, three second rounders is fine. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to say that's just a lot of moving pieces and it probably won't happen. I also don't know if Minnesota wants to trade Ricky Rubio. I think they like him there. I think they'll keep him put. But, yeah, a lot of moving parts. Interesting trade idea there, Rogue Brothers.